Hello, dear ones, Father Peter John, coming to you from All Saints Orthodox Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. Today is the feast of Saint Hilarion the Great. Now, I know that many of you have never even heard of Saint Hilarion the Great. He's not like a, a, a Luke or a Mark or even an Athanasius, right? His name is a little bit less common. We don't have a lot of Hilarions around here. Uh, but nonetheless, he is an incredibly awesome saint. I want to talk a little bit about his life. He was born in Palestine to pagan parents, but he was very smart. They could see there was something about him, and they really wanted to raise him up to be a powerful um, uh, man. And so they sent him at a young age to Alexandria to study philosophy. They wanted him to be a great philosopher. Well, what happened is while he was in Alexandria, he encountered the Christians and he began spending time with the Christians and he began attending uh, the Christian church there. And so uh, before long, he was baptized and then went on a journey into the desert to find St. Anthony the Great. Um, so what happens next is really peculiar. He comes into contact with St. Anthony the Great and St. Anthony sees who's coming, right? St. Anthony had this gift of insight, of clairvoyance. He could see who was coming and he uh, embraced him and he welcomed him. They spent two days together and then St. Anthony uh, had tonsured him a monk. So St. Delarion then at the age of uh, about 13 began his life as an ascetic and a, as a monastic. Uh, he lived with St. Anthony there for a couple of years, emulating everything that St. Anthony was doing, right? Trying to learn how to treat people, interact with people, how to pray, how to fast, etc. After a couple of years, St. Anthony was so overwhelmed by the number of visitors that were coming, he decided he was going to retreat deeper into the desert. And so he blessed St. Hilario, now 15 years old, gave him a hair shirt and a leather coat and sent him on his way back to Palestine. In Palestine, he discovered that his parents had died and left him a great fortune. So he took all of that, everything, he sold it, he gave all of the money to the poor. He went about seven miles out into the desert and found a cave and began his life of prayer in the Palestinian wilderness. Well, after, uh, wow, how was it? About, I think, 18 years of really intense struggle. I mean, struggle with the passions, struggling to pray, uh, struggling to live the life of a devout, ascetic Christian. Um, a woman came to him because she was barren. She couldn't have kids. Her husband was kicking her out of the house and she came and she was just distraught by this and she begged St. Hilarion for, for help. Well, he was resistant at first, but eventually saw she wasn't going to leave. And so he said to her, he said, depart, go back to your home, and it will be as you have asked. Then he began to pray. A year later, she showed up with a little bouncing baby boy and uh, brought him for a blessing to Eladion, who gave the blessing and was overjoyed at seeing this child. Um, a short time later, there was another woman who came and her three children were dying of malaria. They were on their deathbed in Gaza and she begged him with tears to come. And again, he resisted. He hadn't left the desert for 18 years uh, and she wanted him to come to Gaza. And so after so many tears and so many pleadings, eventually he agreed. And at sundown, he came to Gaza. He laid his hands on the three children and prayed. They recovered and were eating within the same hour. Um, what happens next? People find out. They find out who's there, who's living out in the woods. They find out there's this great ascetic and miracle working monk and follower of Christ. And so monks start to come to him. He, the monastic community builds up there. Uh, his fame spreads in Palestine and people are coming and bringing their sick, their possessed, etc. They're all looking for a word. Pretty soon more monasteries are built up around him. There's a whole bunch of monasteries all around him and he's the abbot of all of them. This is not what he was hoping for. What he was hoping for was that he would have an opportunity for some solitude and prayer, which is why he went to the desert in the first place. Well, what happened next is uh, he decided to escape in the middle of the night. And so he went uh, to one of his disciples and he said, you know, make ready for me a camel or a mule or something. And so in the middle of the night, I'm gonna leave. Only told one person. Well, in the morning when people woke up and they found him missing, everybody just, they went into the streets and they started looking everywhere for where he might be. 20,000 people finally approached him on the road. They found him and they begged him to stay. Well, he blessed them all, but he said, I have to go. I'm sorry, this is the way it has to be. He went to Egypt. Uh, he spent time in Egypt around his um, 
dear spiritual father, St. Anthony the Great's cave. Uh, St. Anthony had reposed by this time. They had a beautiful relationship corresponding by letters during his life. But now he was gone and, and St. Ilarion was there in Egypt and was quickly recognized as the light, right? The, the local presence uh, of, of Christ in their midst. Everybody wanted him to be their spiritual father to help lead them to Christ. Well, this isn't what he was looking for. He was looking for silence. And so he stayed for a time, but then he retreated further into the desert. Pretty soon he realized there was nowhere in the East he was going to be able to hide and get any silence and solitude. And so he went to Sicily. Well, when he got to Sicily, nobody knew who he was, but quickly they found out this man of God, this man of prayer uh, was a wonder worker. And so people started bringing their sick and infirm and their possessed to him to be blessed. There was no break night or day. He retreated further into Sicily, but the same thing happened. It just, he couldn't, he couldn't get any silence or solitude. So he escapes to Cyprus. Cyprus, nobody knows who he is in Cyprus, but it doesn't take long before his fame spreads and everybody is bringing their sick and infirm. Everybody's seeking a word from God. He's about to go back to Egypt when one of his friends says to him, there's a place from here on a mountaintop 12 miles away, I'll take you there. So he takes him there to this mountaintop. There's a cave, nobody knows he's there. He's very happy, he's praying, he's tending a garden. He spends five years there. And um, one morning he wakes up and he walks out of his cave and there's a paralytic lying in the middle of his garden. He says, what on earth is going on here? Well, one of the, the local rulers or something was related to this paralytic and had quietly brought him up there in the middle of the night and told the paralytic that there was this man of God living in the cave and to, you know, to wait. And so um, Elarion came out and he had compassion on the paralytic and he prayed for him and he blessed him. And the man got up and began walking around and praising God. Just a wonderful story. But of course, what happens? Here he is in this mountaintop that was so hard to get to, but people started coming and they started bringing all of their sick and infirm and seeking a word. Uh, and anyway, Elarion, this is where he finally ended his life. And all of these beloved people that had gathered around him and come to him and prayed with him, he told them, he said, my, the hour of my departure has come. As soon as I've died, I want you to bury me in my own garden here. And uh, he said, don't even change my clothes. I want to be buried in my monastic garb. And so he died. He breathed his last with the sign of the cross. And they buried him in his garden. And they actually set guards. They tended it, made it look beautiful. They set guards over it so that nobody from Egypt or Palestine or Sicily or anywhere would come to try to take his body away to be blessed by it. They wanted to have the blessing of his relics there in their midst on that Cypriot mountaintop. Just an amazing story. So uh, this holy saint of God, Saint Elarion, uh, he has this wonderful saying on his scroll here, it is a great work to shake from the soul the praise of men. That's what he fought for his whole life, to not be glorified, but to see God glorified through his works and his words. Holy Saint Elarion, pray unto God for us. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.